Lines here, and today we are doing some multiplane. All right, so I opened my new scene. I'll go and do import images, get my PSD from my desktop. So I'll, I'll hit this one, uh, create layers based on file names, import as a Toonbook bitmap drawing, use the vertical fit. And for the alpha, I'll use straight because I know that my images are already transparent, so that's fine. Then I press OK. And now since this PSD is a multi-layered image, I'll just know that file. So I'll set group as layer, transparency is straight, and then OK. And I'll wait a little bit and then I'll have my background. All right. I have this amazing background imported in my scene. So each of my Photoshop group is now a drawing layer in my scene. So I'm just going to align them side by side to keep it very neat. Since it's a background and usually in your scene, on your main composite, you want to have only like one connection for your character, one connection for your whole background. So I'm going to take that and I will cut, paste it, hit Ctrl H to create a composite and then connect it. So it's a bit more clean to look at when you open your scene. What I need to do now is to place my background in my scene. So as you can see, this background is old. <laughs> it was made for these old four, three shows, but now we're in HD, but it's okay. And what I'll do is I'll take my layers and I will make them bigger. So what I'm doing now is I'm moving the drawings directly. I'm putting keyframes on these drawings, which is the thing that I tell people not to do all the time. But that is the one instance where I think it's okay. If you have a background and you want it to fit your camera on the first frame, I mean, it's okay to like put keyframes on your own drawing, I guess. And anyway, usually your background will already be this, say, the good size. Like you won't have a 4-3 background to fit in an HD scene. Uh, this is like exceptional. I did it, okay? I put a keyframe on my drawing. Sue me. And then what we will want to do is push our background in 3D space. So this is a trick that I used to do in studios all the time to go faster. So you select all your elements, you go Ctrl Shift P to put a peg on each of them, and then you hit Ctrl P to put a peg on everything. So if you do it very quick, it goes like pew pew, and you have your peg system for your whole background. And it took like one second and it's done. So then I can start and take each of my uh, background to move them. But before I do that, I would like to show you a new view. So we've seen the perspective view so far and the camera view. And if I go here, I can go get plus uh, there's top and side view. I will use the top view just because I want, like not one is better than the other. I just prefer to have my drawings on the side here instead of on the top. It's just a personal preference. So I'm going to use top. And now if you click on your drawing, it's pink. So if I move, if I move them in the Z space, I will move my drawing layer directly and I don't want that. I want to select the peg, right? So to prevent any mistakes from happening, I will now select my drawing and get into and get into this little button here, which is called Set Properties on Many Layers. It's usually used uh, to do rigging, like to make sure that all your pegs are separate and stuff. So we can use it to stop our drawing layers from having animations on them. So animate using animation tool, you set it to off. And then if I click on it now, it will be yellow because it will select automatically the peg that is on top, which is pretty great. And now for my pegs, I want them to be in separate mode. So I'm going to click on my pegs and just go separate. So now what I need to do is push my background in space. So I will take the sky card here and I will get my translate tool and push it. The problem that is happening now is that since I'm pushing it in space, if I show you in perspective, my drawing is not changing its size at all. But since it's going further away from my camera, my pieces now look like they're shrinking. But it's just because they're going away. So then, if you were in another software, <coughs> I'm talking about you, After Effects, you would have to like make them fit after, but like the scaling, and there's some math attached to that. You have to go like, what is the ratio of my background divided by the percentages of... It's math! I don't want to have anything to do with math. So in Harmony, it's very easy. You don't need to like push and scale and stuff. All you need to do is click on your pieces, and instead of moving them with the Translate tool, you go and get the Maintain Size button. And like the sole purpose of this button is to keep visual scale and camera view as you move element in Z-axis in the side or top view, which is exactly what we want. So I click on this, and then here, I'll go push it in space. So it doesn't look like it changed or anything, but if I go get a camera and I move forward, you'll see we have some Z-depth happening. All right, so now I'm gonna go and push my other pieces around. Like so. 
And if I move my camera, I'll have a very nice 3D uh, feeling. Though I don't, I don't think it's very great right now. And this is because I put everything behind what we call ground zero. So the white lines that you see here are actually your zero axes. So usually if you have a ground in your scene where your character is going to act, you want to keep it on the ground zero line here. So I'll take my this piece and I'll replace it on the ground zero and I'll take what is my OL and instead of pushing it, I'll bring it forward near the camera. So now this will give me a very cool uh, multiplane effect. You see how immersive this is? Very nice and it took like 5 seconds to do. And I had to explain it. <laughs> uh, so it's good for your zoom in, it's good to move around. And furthermore, you can even go here in your camera peg, or any peg actually, and you can even activate the 3D mode. Enable 3D, which will give you a new kind of controller in which you can rotate to move around your background, which is very cool to do some camera movements. All right, so just before we continue, I want to show you uh, how it looks in perspective when you use a maintenance size tool because maybe this will help you understand how it works. I'm gonna take my sky card and I'll use the translate tool to move it so you see it's not changing size and in the camera view it will make it go bigger. All right so if I take the maintain size tool and I move it you see it's going to shrink in the perspective view but it's not going to shrink into the camera view it's only going to change the layering. So this is a very, very powerful tool to make your life easier. Very nice and very cool to do your camera movement with. Last thing I want to say about that today is kind of a little uh, teaser for a future video, maybe. Uh, in Harmony, we have two types of pegs. Their 3D paths are separate. Uh, if you have a peg that is in 3D path, it's actually cool to make camera movement with it. If I take my camera and I make a camera movement, just like so. I'm doing something random, okay? Don't judge me. <laughs> if I click on my peg and I hit the show control button, I'll be able to see the trajectory of my peg. So for now, it's just a straight line. But if I go here and I activate the tweening, now I'll see these little marks on it. And this, this, and there is one mark for every frame. So if I go here in the drop down menu, and I hit different kind of interpolation, you see that the spacing is going to change, allowing you to maybe work with your timing a little bit. And with 3D path peg, what is great is that if you go over the line and you press P once, you can create these cool little dots that will allow you to move your camera around. So these dots are really just there to shape your curve. They don't put any keyframes in your camera. So the timing stays the same with the motion, but then you can like change it around, which is pretty cool. But uh, I will cover everything concerning like separate pegs and 3D path pegs and 3D pegs in a separate video because today we are out of time. So I'm always happy to help you out understand this amazing software and I hope you have fun experimenting with the multiplane. And if you come up with something cool, let me know in the comments below and I'll go check it out. If you have any questions or suggestions, the comments is also the place to go. So have a wonderful week and I'll see you next time for another video.